So let's, let's kick off then, just with three grounding breaths, yeah? Should we do that? Everybody join in, please, if you feel like it. So the first thing you do is you just breathe in through your nose, really kind of... And then out with an R. <sighs> okay? And this time when you breathe out, you're going to breathe out through your feet, anything that's stressing and worrying you today. So breathing in through your nose. Breathing out and letting go. One more time, breathing in through your nose. Breathing out. Just arriving back here now and smiling. My feet do feel different. Mm. Like I feel like something's been released through my... Yeah. Wow, feeling good. Really? Super simple. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you. Eight books. I'm so anyone that can write one <laughs> book is <laughs> in my eyes because I'm currently writing a book. The yeah. idea of eight astonishes me. Um, two of which were on meditation and mindfulness. And mm, yep. that's actually our monthly giveaway book. Mm. Um, is a gratitude journal which is celebrating its fifth. It's the fifth anniversary last September. It was indeed. It was indeed. And it feels really weird when a book reaches five. It's like, that feels like quite a milestone, but it's taken me a decade to write the books. I'm working on number eight as we speak, which is all about ditching imposter syndrome. Um, and I've had two novels hide in the middle of those. <laughs> so I guess you properly introduce oh, yeah, yourself first. Yeah. Yes. So who are you? Why are you here? <laughs> What expertise do you bring to the table? Why, why are you my gratitude expert this month? Well, because, okay, so I started off with a master's degree in mechanical engineering in German, as you do. Um, I wanted to study German and Russian, but a 17-year-old me thought that would be too easy. <laughs> yeah, as, as you do. Um, so I got my master's, I got my first, I spent 10 years in engineering, and then I suddenly realized one day that what... I specialized in lean manufacturing. So, you know, that stuff on just in time that we keep hearing in the news. I was a world expert in that and Six Sigma. And yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I loved diesel engine manufacture. That's where I really loved hanging out. It's where my expertise was. And then I realized one day what I loved about it was actually making people smile. So I'd go down on the shop floor. It was part of my morning ritual, go to the cafe to get my cup of coffee. And I almost had a competition with myself of how many people can I make smile between my desk and the cafe and back. And my nickname was Smiler because I like to spread this wave of smiling, even though they also called me the ice queen and other unfavorable terms whenever I said no to something that they wanted me to do. <laughs> and there was the whole me too stuff. My motivation was that smile was knowing that if you could lift somebody's spirits for two or three minutes, you could change the course of their day. So a high volume manufacturer where it costs $2,000 to stop the production line and part of your job is to stop the production line if the quality's not right, is kind of stressful. I didn't like who it was turning me into. So I just they were blocking my promotions out of the factory. So I decided to jump ship, went to South America for six months to study Spanish. I came back and I ended up as head of market research at Dyson. So that was being that link between the marketing teams, the engineers and the customers. And I loved that. It was great. And that got me realizing that what I wanted to know was not how machines ticked, but how people ticked. I'd been passionate about psychology since I was 14. Back in those days, you didn't study it at university. It was still a bit weird and new. Um, and so I went off and became an NLP trainer. It took me three or four years did all of that in-depth certification and studying. And after a few years, I realized I couldn't make a big enough difference in somebody else's company. So in 2003, I set up my own business and did a lot of work in the market research field. And then when the kids arrived, I had to take my business more online because I found it really hard to juggle children and somebody actually expecting me to be there in a meeting with my eyes open saying something intelligent. <laughs> Whereas running my business online, I could set my terms and my hours. And my eldest is now 14. So that's how long I've been doing this. Over the last five to 10 years, I've started really moving into that B2C self-help area. And 
only in the last couple of years I've started going back into the B2B, the corporate work, executive mentoring, um, leadership training, things like leading from your heart in a head-based world. So always applying that grounded engineering to what can otherwise be fluffy and somewhat impractical. Yeah, but my big passion is helping people tame the inner critic because that is the biggest reason why we don't get out there and do what we really want to do, why we beat ourselves up, and the gratitude is just a fab way to do that. And I just feel like when you give birth or adopt or become a step, however you become a mum, because for me, all of those are equal mum. I've been a step parent. Mm -hmm step parent I had two 11 and 13 when I got married to my ex-husband living at home yeah. for five years so I've done teenage yeah. and I've done baby and early toddler just the middle yeah of yet um and so I, I classify all those as becoming a mum but your inner critic is then given a giant mm. megaphone mm. with the child like you get mm. given child and inner critic gets megaphone oh and yeah and everybody you meet in the supermarket screams into that megaphone yeah. with their little judgment of why isn't little Johnny wearing a hat? Have you not seen the weather today? And it's like, look, we're up and we're out of the house. <laughs> He's alive. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Just take it. Just take that today. Take it. <laughs> Tomorrow I will be perfect. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. That inner critic starts the moment we find out we're going to be a mum, however that's happening, we start that worrying. And if you go through the pregnancy route, it starts as soon as the midwife starts telling you what you should and shouldn't do. Yeah. I call it shouditis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I had my eldest, it was when they first decided that soft cheese might be dangerous. And being an engineer, I calculated I was actually a hundred times more likely to be run over crossing the road than to get listeriosis from soft cheese. Anyway, <laughs> and I remember my midwife actually, when I, I tongue in cheek, because I'm a bit of a rebel, I just said to say, Oh, Philadelphia is a soft cheese. That's probably dangerous too, isn't it? And she said, I think you'd best avoid that too, just in case. See, I, I, I suffered with really bad pregnancy anxiety, and I did an oh. article for a uh, blog post from another lady recently. Yeah. And I opened it with the story of me crossing the road while pregnant. <coughs> because it was the stuff of. Looking back, mm. it was a stuff of comedy. It does not feel. It did not feel like that at the time. But tiny little road, quiet road, middle of the day, bollards in the middle. So I didn't even have to cross the whole road in one go. Mm. Would take me ten minutes. Yeah. Because wow. I was going to trip over and bump my bump, or trip over mm. and the car wouldn't see me, so it's going to run over me, and then it was going to wonder what it ran over. So it would go. It would reverse to look at what it <laughs> ran over. So I'd get run over. To, like it was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, no. <laughs> my inner critic didn't even think I was capable of handling the bump situation. No, no. I I've got control of that now. I kind of I very lucky came into motherhood with a lot of skill transferable skills yeah. yep. beneficial, but mm. my inner critic during pregnancy was probably its most loudest it's ever wow. <laughs> crazy so today we're going to be really going into the gratitude mm. side of things our theme for the month has been gratitude mm. and we've been doing lots of sort of gratitude things on all the different platforms what is for you what is gratitude mm. like back to basics what is okay. gratitude? okay so for me gratitude it needs to be unconditional so you're not saying thank you because somebody did something, you know, because you feel you have to or because you feel that's what's expected. It's simply just saying thank you. And the way I love to teach it is the more specific you can be. So you're saying thank you for something in your life. The more specific you can be, the stronger you will feel it in your body. So where a lot of us struggle with gratitude is it's a very cognitive, cerebral thing is, oh, I'm grateful for that blue sky. Yeah. And there's no emotional response in your body. To get gratitude to really work, you don't want to think it, you want to feel it. So if you look up and you say, you know what, that blue sky reminds me of that dress and I feel so grateful to it right now because, and you really dive into that and you imagine it's just expanding, what you're doing is you're actually resetting your nervous system. So there's two parts to your nervous system. There's the parasympathetic, which is your relaxation, chilled out response, and the sympathetic, which is the stress, fight, flight, freeze. Most of us run on low-level adrenaline most of the time, which is really bad for us. 
gratitude is a way of getting that back in balance. It gets the sympathetic nervous system standing down. So it takes away the panic, the stress, the worry, the anxiety. And it gets that relaxed but alert parasympathetic nervous system back in the driving seat, which is where you need it to be. So for me, gratitude is a physical thing. It works at a biochemical level in the body, and it also rewires your brain at a physical level. It's like brain surgery, pain-free, no doctors needed. And this is how it starts to retrain you to go from beating yourself up to thinking thoughts that make you feel happier, or at least okay, more of the time. You're reprogramming the filters in your brain to spot what's going well, but you're not doing this Pollyanna whitewashing of, that terrible thing just happened, but I'm so grateful for this, through gritted teeth, yeah? It's about that genuine letting go, saying, yeah, okay, this terrible thing just happened. Breathe in, breathe out, let that go. And I'm choosing right now to focus on this instead. Okay, so you don't need to get that churning in your stomach. You don't need to get that clenched jaw, those worried eyes. You can just let it go, take the action you need to take, and get yourself back to equilibrium much more quickly. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I, I will say if anyone's got any questions, we'll, we'll aim to answer them at the end, but do pop them in the chat box. On your phone, it's a bit more obvious, but if you're on your desktop, uh, Right, I'm going to try and point around here. There should be a <laughs> little thing that says chat. If you click on that, a box should appear. And I'm going to try and keep an eye on the chat box. Um, <laughs> so do say in there if you've got a question, and I will try and keep on it and relay it, relay it back so we can we can get to the questions. But it may be that we do all the questions at the end unless they mm. really kind of okay. care. Yeah. And if there's anything I say that doesn't make sense, do just dive in and ask. I'm really happy to, to clarify. Excellent. So you kind of touched on it a little bit there, but so why is it important that we do this? Like, I, I guess we kind of have to look at the, the mm. detriment of not doing it, the bad things that can happen if we don't do it. But okay. why is it important to, this life, in, to our lives? What does it add okay. in our lives, the lives of our children, etc.? Okay. Well, there are two primary emotions in life. There's love and there's fear. And most of us, if you were an alien, and teaching them how to think the way we think, most of the time the alien would assume that we were actively choosing to live a, love, live a life from a place of fear. Okay, The fear, the worry, the stress, the anxiety. It's like we have an inner radio station. It's the thoughts in your head that also affect your body. You know, If you think, I'm really, really tired, it instantly affects your posture. It affects the way you breathe by squashing the diaphragm. It affects biochemical hormone reactions in your body that make that is self-fulfilling prophecy. I am tired. If you're thinking, actually, I'm feeling good, it changes everything about your posture, your biochemistry, your thoughts. So our thoughts create our physical experience. They trigger the emotions, which are chemical reactions in the body. And they affect what we can create and do and achieve in our entire experience of life. So why is it we go through life thinking thoughts that make us feel miserable, not good enough, like we have to do things, and it's because most of the time we think we've got no control over the thoughts we think. Yeah, most of us have picked up that belief. It's my thoughts happen to me. I remember teaching a friend about the secret oh, 12 years ago now when it first came out. And she knew that I taught that kind of stuff. And she wanted to know, you know, what's the big deal? I've, I've been reading. I just don't get it. And she sat there and she cried. And she said, I don't know how to control my thoughts. I've suddenly got that my thoughts create my experience of life. But I don't know how to control them. How do I do it? And nobody was teaching that. And she set me off on a mission, which is why I decided to find out how that happened. It's one of the reasons I chose to study meditation. Because when you do regular meditation, it calms the thoughts down. And then it's much easier to pick which ones to choose. So in your brain, if you imagine you're walking through a field. Okay, so I live in the countryside here in Sussex. And it's quite common in summer for the fields to have grass that's kind of like waist height for somebody my height. I'm not far off hobbit height. I don't have the hairy toes. And it, when it's about waist height, you walk through it. To the other, you obviously get very wet in the dew. <laughs> it's tickling your armpits. And the next day, there's no sign that you walk that field. But if I walked that field with my muddy boots on and it had been raining and I'm stomping, really putting some effort in, if I did that three or four times a day for a week, there'll be a footpath there. 
If I did that 20 times a day or 20 times an hour for a week, it's like a motorway. And the thoughts in your brain are the same. When you think of thoughts, synapses in your brain fire off. The more often you fire the same thoughts, the more it becomes like a motorway in your brain. So a tiny trigger, like somebody saying, I need you to present on Friday, Claire. If what's normally coming after that is, oh, but I'm no good at presenting and last time I did it, Fred said such and such. It becomes like an, a highway autopilot. You're programming your brain. And there's a bit in your brain, I love it, called the reticular activating system. It governs sleep patterns and sensory awareness. So right now, are you aware of the air pressure in your left ear? My right ear popped when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the woo. <laughs> so there are millions of pieces of information that bombard us every day that we don't notice because this bit in your brain is incredibly useful and it says, no, Jessica doesn't need to know that. Yeah, I've got that sorted. You know, right now, I'm not aware of how the big toe on my left foot feels unless I consciously send my attention there. So this reticular activating system, this filter system, we teach it what's important to us, which is why you get this red car phenomenon. If you buy a red car, suddenly every car on the road is red because suddenly it's important to you because you've just bought a red car and that bit of your brain goes, red car, red car, red car. They weren't there yesterday. Yeah. Yes. So this bit of your brain, if your habitual thoughts are looking for what's wrong, what you're doing wrong, how difficult life is, you've programmed that bit of your brain to spot evidence to support those beliefs. And that's a pretty icky way to live. Yeah, you've got anxiety, worry, depression. At best, you've just got not really feeling great. When you work regularly with gratitude, you're creating new motorways in your brain. You are reprogramming that filter in your brain to spot what's going well. So you're bringing everything back in balance. That means that your body experiences different emotions. You're not pushing down the fear, the worry, the negativity. You get to be more of who you really are. And in meditation, we talk about the swinging pendulum. Somebody you can spot who meditates regularly because they might lose their rag, but they're back to calm in moments. Whereas somebody who doesn't, we can feed that drama story for days, weeks, months. I'm sure I've managed for years, yeah? <laughs> and gratitude is a way, when you bring it into that physical experience of gratitude, and you really allow it just to expand by getting specific and training yourself every day to play with this stuff. By the end of just a few weeks, they've shown it can have a clinically measurable effect on things like depression and anxiety. It's absolutely amazing because a lot of the things that I, that I teach about require a, a lot of, in some cases, a lot of physical effort because I also yeah. do uh, but, but it's, it's kind of so much, gratitude is such an easy thing to fit in. Yeah. Not crazy busy lives and yet can have such an impact because things like mm. depression, it doesn't just affect your mind, it then affects your mm. body, it then affects mm. your mind again and things like this and, and it completely exhausts you. And, and mother yeah. and exhausting anyway, you add depression into the mix and you, you're really in trouble. And to be mm. able to use the skill of gratitude and makes such a big difference is amazing and it's and it's free mm, it's exactly free. exactly and the thing is it's it's also not about whitewashing so this is where i see a lot of people who are learning gratitude heading in a direction that makes it harder because it sets up an inner conflict because your brain is used to telling yourself these mind stories about how hard things are and how you wish you'd had more sleep and you're desperate to go back to work or you're back at work and you feel bad about not being with the kids However, that story is running for you. If you then try and paper gratitude over the top, it's like having a badly cracked wall, wallpapering or painting it and expecting it to look good. It's not going to happen. What you do with gratitude is you go deep inside and you say, yeah, okay, that bit is real for me right now. And for the next 60 seconds, I'm going to choose to focus on this bit that makes me feel great. And if you did that 10 times a day, if you just had a reminder on your phone, yeah, or every time you pop to the ladies, <laughs> if you're at work, if you just said, right, I'm just going to give myself 60 seconds. And the technique, can I teach the technique I use, my 60-second gratitude spiral? Yes, definitely. Go okay. 
Okay, so please don't do this if you're currently driving. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Okay, make sure the kids are safe. <laughs> so just start by just getting back here now with your eyes softly closed. And if you want to, you can do those three sign breaths again that we started with, breathing in through your nose. <sighs> just do those in your own time while I waffle here. And right now, I invite you to think of one thing you feel grateful for, something really specific that's going well in your life or something or someone you're glad is in your life right now. And imagine that that feeling is in your heart and you allow it to gently expand as though you're turning up the dial on that feeling of thank you. Feeling it grow. And now think of one more thing that you're grateful for in your life, something specific. It might be something someone said. It might be someone close to you. It might be the phone you're holding in your hand, the pen on your table. Allow your feelings, thank you, to softly expand and grow. And now one more thing that you really feel grateful for in your life. Becoming aware of how that feeling of gratefulness, that thankfulness, whatever word works for you, can effortlessly expand and start to wash through every cell in your body. From the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And as you prepare to release the practice, thanking yourself for taking these few moments to say thank you for what's important to you in your life. Taking a deep breath in, opening your eyes, maybe a stretch and a smile. How did that feel? That was awesome. How easy is that? <laughs> so mine wasn't as good as that, but I started doing something similar and I did mine when I got into bed at night. Yep. My brain goes a million miles a minute. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> I mean, you just look at everything I do with Superman. That's kind of enough, but there's like a whole other personal life going on as well. Mm. And I was really finding it very hard to shut off when mm. I went to sleep. And I thought, oh, this gratitude thing's meant to be good. Yeah. I, I'll use that to start helping me get a bed better. Yeah. So I started doing it and it's, mm. it makes me, it puts me to sleep quicker. Mm. It makes me, my sleep quality is better when I do it, but also yeah. now it's had the impact that gratitude has in general exactly. it's not just improving my sleep um, and it's just I feel like this magical sort of glowing ball by the time I'm going to sleep is the best way I can describe it yeah um, and it's just kind of yeah it's lovely I mean I'm I'm a Christian mama so when I'm yeah. doing my gratitude it's for some someone specific mm. yeah. specifically. um yeah. but it was funny when I first started doing gratitude, I mm. wasn't directing it at mm. God. Mm. So whether you're directing it at him or not, I, I, mm. I felt the benefits. Yeah. I, hope, I feel like I'm like this glowing ball again now and rambling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're describing about feeling more relaxed and being able to sleep better and improving the quality of your sleep, that is because the sympathetic nervous system, that fight, flight, freeze has reset. And you've rebalanced the parasympathetic nervous system by feeling that gratitude. So you've actually set your body up to sleep. Yeah? yeah? Clever girl. You did it. There's a lovely thing you can do at bedtime as well. If somebody's had a tough day, you can do something I call telling yourself a bedtime gratitude story. So it's a way of rewriting what you want to remember from that day. So say you've had a day where, frankly, there are people who ought to have stayed in bed who dared to cross your path. Yeah, we all get days like that sometimes. <laughs> Maybe it's been a tough one or you're just really, really exhausted from it. So you're lying in bed, your eyes are closed. You just let that breathing, those three breaths, yeah, in through the nose, out with a sigh is such a good anchor for starting to reset those hormones. And then you just imagine that you're watching your day up on a movie screen in the cinema and you choose only to notice the things you feel grateful for during your day. 
and you just run through your day key scene by key scene and you find something in every scene you feel grateful for and it doesn't matter what it is it might be the pen on your desk you might just go well somebody invented that and then somebody made it and then somebody shipped it and then somebody bought it yeah find something in each scene that you can say thank you for and it reprograms the way your brain will store how your day went it's just incredible it's i've seen such a difference i'm going to give some of my personal examples yeah. and my next question is to ask you for some other examples that you've seen happen with other people is the I, ha I haven't been doing that movie thing that you just yeah. described, but thinking about it now, I would find it easier to pinpoint the bad things because so much of it mm. is good. Mm. I, as in, I see so much good, so it would just take me mm. too long to describe all the good, but I could be like, there's that mm. tiny, tiny thing I wasn't quite so grateful for. But everything else, mm. because I focus so much on what brings me gratitude and mm. makes me feel this way and done these processes that now I, I'm very, I'm a very big believer in designing your own life mm -hmm. and, and now design this life that is full of things that I'm grateful for. And it makes it so much easier to let go of the things that are beyond your control. Cause you're like, I'm okay, yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my pen. I haven't yeah. I just wanted to bring my pen into situation cause it's very sparkly. Um, but, <laughs> I can, if this pen stopped working, I would just be like, yeah, but it's still pretty. Like, I just, <laughs> I seem like this crazy positive person now. And I didn't mm. used to be like that. I used to be mm. very, very black and would have really, really mm. struggled to find that mm. tiny little bit of positivity mm. in there. And it's amazing the switch that I'm the complete opposite. Yeah. And it's just been mind work. I've probably yeah. been through tougher experiences during the time that I've been more positive mm. um, and anyone that's seen any of the videos where I've gone into my backstory will kind of understand what I'm going into there we won't go into mm. that now because it's a long story um yeah. but the the fact that people can implement these things at the hardest times of their lives mm. and make such an impact is just incredible yeah. um so yeah what what are some of uh I, I'm, I'm a questioner mm. Mm. okay like, moving in the four tendencies i'm a questioner i need i need lots of information to be able to do okay. um so if there may be some sort of short examples that you can give us of, of specific people you know obviously you don't have to use mm -hmm. the name or your mm -hmm. school of where this has made like a big difference a big turnaround in their lives okay well one of the things i find if i'm running a workshop and you say to people i want you to remember a happy time when Okay, people really struggle to remember happy times, but they find it really easy to remember times when things went wrong. Yeah, and you, there's a technique you sometimes use where you say, Imagine your life's a book and you're flicking through the pages. And people are often shocked when they do an exercise that requires that how easy it is to remember the things that went wrong, the bad stuff, the unkindness, all of that. When you work with them and teach them these techniques, and they actually go and play with them, when you next work with them and say, Think of a happy time when they're like, Shh. Yeah, you see how it shifted. I've seen this with children. With children, it works brilliantly because they haven't yet had all of those decades of programming and wiring their brain to spot what's going wrong. So, with kids, you can turn this around really, really quickly. And, you know, worry thoughts, you can flip almost instantly. And there's a magic question that I use with kids because sometimes they don't want to talk about gratitude. So you've got to find their language. But the question that works if a child's stuck in negative thinking is what do you want instead? It's helping them just, I call it my magic question. I use it with grown ups and myself all the time too. If somebody's stuck on a worry train, right, what do you want instead? Okay, now let's look for something in this that maybe is positive that you could feel happy about. And you start anchoring them into those emotions and it makes it much easier for them to handle the stress that they've been going through or to press pause on that mind story. I've used gratitude. Um, I don't know if you know, but I co-led the EU VAT action campaign to get EU law changed on digital VAT. And we used gratitude during the campaign. Whenever we wanted to go completely stir crazy because this law had been brought in by the British government and the EU that stopped tens or hundreds of thousands of micro businesses trading overnight by accident. Whenever we wanted to dive into the drama of, but how could they not see that? We would take that step back and we would focus on gratitude 
but the people who'd messed up were then helping us. And we were told that that changed the way the British government worked with micro businesses. We were told by the European Commission, nobody had ever run a campaign in that way before. So we made the whole thing blame free, even though there were probably people we wanted to strangle at times. By using gratitude and focusing with clear intention on, okay, this person just stood in our way there. And look at this person who's trying to open the door for us. We constantly kept focusing again on what we had achieved and how many people were supporting us and the media that was helping us and the people in high office who weren't supposed to even be talking to us, who were actually pulling strings to try and help fix things. And it kept us sane. And we achieved what we'd been told by the UK government at the beginning of the campaign was totally impossible. We achieved it. So those are some examples. It just it kind of blows my mind and it can be quite frustrating you get people classify things like gratitude as woo woo well, mm. hang on a I quite like woo woo thank you very much but actually there is there's physical science behind it yes. there's like chemistry yeah. and biology both subjects I was terrible at at school um like yeah. my poor teachers they really tried but I'm not I'm not a science brain but I do find a lot yeah. of reassurance in knowing that there's science behind things. Mm. I think we put a lot of, bizarrely, we, it's easier to put faith in science because we can see the yeah. results. They give you a, they can give you a document with the actual data mm. on, not they understand any of it, but it's really amazing that there, yeah, there is the science behind what is classified as this woo-woo thing that people just sort of brush mm. under the carpet, but is, can make such a mega impact on such a big level as say, with like politics like it's, it's, it's <laughs> well imagine this then as a management situation so maybe you've got a manager who is struggling with imposter syndrome and i've been running a big research study that's proven that if you're running imposter syndrome and you get promoted that one step beyond your comfort zone it's really really common to turn into a micromanager who's really irritable and nitpicky and it can change the whole team dynamic. So if you can help that person to learn to change the filters in their brain, to spot what's going well rather than what's going wrong, firstly, they beat themselves up less. Secondly, it helps them deal with the imposter syndrome in a much more positive way. But every interaction they have with a team member, the team member can tell whether or not they're about to get told off. We can always tell. Yeah, we've got this sixth sense. That's not woo, it's just how we're wired. You can tell if somebody's angry before they open their mouth. If for every interaction that manager has just done 60 seconds of gratitude like we did just now, imagine how different that meeting will be. Imagine how much more constructive the team will be, how much more supported they will feel, the progress they'll make, the risks they'll take to grow the business and outperform competitors. And you can do that with 60 seconds of gratitude. You can use that heart-based leadership in the head-based world to turn entire teams and businesses around without having to go woo-woo. This is proven, you know, the whole parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system is proven and measurable. The whole rewiring of the brain neurology, they've done the scans, they've done the research, they've shown this. It makes a tangible difference because you're training yourself instead of criticizing yourself and then others, you know, all criticism is born of someone else's pain, as the Native Americans say. All criticism is just somebody projecting their pain. If the manager's dealt with some of their inner pain and they've rewired their brain to think more positively, the whole team changes their behavior. That's incredible. My, my mind, I was already a big believer in gratitude because I've mm. had the impact it's had on my life, but you're blowing my mind. <laughs> this is why I love what I do. I get to bring these amazing experts in and ask them loads of questions. <laughs> Like, so imagine if imagine if we were teaching this in schools imagine if we were teaching it in universities imagine if we were teaching this in businesses imagine if we were teaching this in antenatal classes or adoption classes imagine if knowing how to rewire your brain to think thoughts that make you feel great was a key part of our education can you imagine the difference we'd make in the world in just a decade world would be so, just the world would be a better place it's as simple as that yeah. the world would be a better place so yeah. we've kind of talked about how we can incorporate it with ourselves we've touched a little bit on the kid side of things it's mm. I, it obviously my, my question was gonna be how how um 
important is it to get our kids involved but I feel like it's it's how it's can we get our kids more involved like we very, very. clearly it's a, a, an essential part of future happiness I think now yeah. more than ever they're bombarded with so much negativity okay. uh, that this this is kind of an essential part of parenting what can we what can we do how can we get them involved more so the first thing is we need to lead the way okay because kids learn by mimicking the elders around them so if you're sat there with your inner critic running and a hefty dose of shaditis of oh, i have to do that i must it's not fair they will feel that and if you start saying to them you've got to do gratitude practice now little johnny it's not going to work so when i work with parents i always implore them to do the techniques for themselves until they're second nature for a week or two and then to teach it to the child because then you're congruent and it's like the kid can tell it's going to work. Yeah. They don't have their BS radar out because mum or dad is already doing it. They've seen the improvement. You know, have you noticed I'm not so irritable anymore? Have you noticed I'm smiling more, laughing more? Yeah. Why is that? What do you want to know? So with the older kids, it's really important to do it that way. With young children, you start with pictures. It's just get them in the habit of draw me a picture of something that made you really happy this week. Um, because as soon as they get through to five, six, seven, and they start developing that consciousness, yeah. the inner critic starts coming into play. When you go through those middle years between nine and 11, where they're realizing they're separate to mom and dad, and they have that wobble, and that's where you can start getting more cognitive. And the teenagers are a whole other story because you've got to build the relationship early if you can. It's never too late to start, but you need to be talking from the younger years about emotions. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What's happening for you with this? Because when they articulate their thoughts, we know what it's like. If you write something down, it doesn't need to spin in your head. If you teach them to start articulating their thoughts, it gives them a focus. And then with all of those cognitive ages, I use my emergency first aid, which I call my ABC technique, which works amazingly for grown-ups too. Accept, breathe, choose. That simple. So you're having a thought that's making you feel terrible. It might be a worry thought. It might be an anxiety thought. It might be a mind story fear. Accept it was there. Because if you try and push it away, you're actually giving it all of your focus and attention. You're giving it all of your power. And you're fighting it. And guess what? It's going to win because it wasn't conscious anyway. So you accept it was there, do that deep breath in. <sighs> okay, I had a thought that made me feel like this. That breathe is really important because that resets the nervous system as we've been playing with today. Choose, all right, now I'm gonna choose to think three thoughts that make me feel better. Accept, breathe, choose. The more you play with that with kids, the more you're tuning that in a radar to spot at a conscious level thoughts that they're not enjoying before they get in that spiral. The breathe is about the reset button, the choose, choose three thoughts that bring relief, that make you feel happier or that you're grateful for. So that's how I play with it with kids is get them saying, you know, my, my seven year old now is saying, mommy, I'm stuck with worry thoughts. Yeah. And that's what he calls them because he knows that that's how they make him feel. And then we'll start playing with that. So it's making it a game, making it so easy they can only succeed, accept, breathe, choose. It's I, I, my, my daughter's not yet two, she's two at the end mm. of it. And I'm trying to encourage her speaking because she's showing lots of signs of being quite an early speaker and she's really enjoying her word. She seems very proud of herself when she says a word right and things like that. Mm. So we try uh, before lunch nap and for bedtime is we ask what's happened previously. And it's quite nice we do it at dinner as well, because if daddy's not been with us during the day, it's nice for him to hear from his little girl what she's done. Yeah. And there might be one, there one word answers, occasionally two. Um, yeah. And we, we don't ever focus on the bad things, because why would mm. I ask her, uh, where did you have a temper tantrum today? Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm, I am just asking her about the nice things, about the grateful mm. things. Um, quite often food, because she's always very grateful for there to be food involved. <laughs> we love our food. Um, and we, yeah, we do. So what did you eat for lunch today? And she sits and thinks. And, and it does mean that, yeah, two or three times a day, we're thinking through the good mm. things that have happened. It's yeah. like that, that film playing that movie role and things. Mm. Um, 
the other one I like, I actually did a blog post about it, is the, the growing a gratitude tree. So literally, yeah. now, or painting on a wall the trunk of a tree, and every day you put right on a leaf what you're grateful for and, and stick it yeah. on the tree. Um, and she's not old enough for that yet, but we're definitely going to do it. I've already picked out the, the door I want to stick it all onto. Um, oh. We're going to do leave, a leaf for something we're grateful for and flowers for new skills. Okay. So and she learns a new skill. The tree grows a flower. And we'll put it on. We'll Aww. put it on the tree. And watch the tree grow. Um, and I, I love that. I, but it's, it's. I was talking to you today. I'm realizing mm -hmm. little things that I've been doing that actually, yeah. although she won't be registering them as gratitude things because yeah. she's not even two. Um, obviously they're making me more grateful for everything. Mm. Because I'm constantly talking about the good stuff and the things that we've enjoyed of our days so um, yeah but that's a good thing for mommy as well as as well as baby and daddy gets to hear the good things daddy daddy that's cool <laughs> and it's as, and it's really important for it just to be fun for the kids and and not to beat yourself up you know there'll be days where the children would quite frankly rather go to the dentist than do a gratitude practice yeah and as, as kids get older and you get those hormone shifts coming in hormones affect emotions and emotions affect thoughts which affect the body and the emo it all goes around in this big circle so there will be times where gratitude is not enough to shift something actually your child needs to get their hormones back in balance and i've got three boys for my teenager that might mean he needs to go out and do some sport yeah to clear through that flood of testosterone so it's really important for us to let go of our attachment to how they play with these techniques and just keep modeling it to them yeah. and being open to it's a, you know for, for me for children's mental health it's about the parents being open to the discussions so the kids say they feel they can talk to you if they're not feeling happy they feel that they can yeah because they it's a shock for children not to feel happy and if they've been through something traumatic or that's upset them in the day that they feel that they can when they're cognitive they can talk that through and then let it go because again it's the biggest challenge i see with gratitude is people using it to try and pretend that everything's okay the spiritual bypass yeah is oh this awful thing happened but it's all fine because i've got my pen my pen's perfect i love my pen i wrote all my books with this pen <laughs> i bought it with the royalty from my first book on ebay <laughs> But you know, we we try and use gratitude to pretend things aren't okay, are okay. But actually, what we need to be doing is looking at the stuff that is hurting, and saying, "Well, what do I need to change about me so that this doesn't bother me anymore?" You know, do I need to stand up and have some boundaries? Do I need to go and have some challenging conversations and explain to people what's okay and what's not? Do I need to forgive somebody? Do I need to forgive myself? Yeah. So gratitude for me is about allowing the whole of you to be present and accepted without judgment and to consciously choose to spot what's going well, what you feel grateful for, rather than diving back into the drama and the pain, but still dealing with the root cause triggers of that drama and pain so that you can genuinely experience life from that place of, I can ride this wave. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's brilliant. I, I'm going to sort of prompt everyone, if you've got any questions, to pop them in the chat box. Um, I feel like I've answered all my questions that I had on my very long, <laughs> list, of, very long list of questions. Um, can you, well, uh, do you pop in the comments down below? Uh, I think it's down below. There's like a little thing. It's, it just literally says chat and it's like a speech bubble. Um, pop it in there. Or if people are struggling to find that in a moment, I'll say, just turn, put, take the mute off your mic and you can speak if you like. But could you give us a bit more information on the book? So the book is our giveaway mm. book month. Oh, now you're going to see inside one of my... Oh, it's not too messy. Everybody though. close your eyes. One of my nose, <laughs> I have two, two nose. To be fair, let's be full disclosure. That's not that messy. That's not that messy. And that's pretty organised too. I now, think that's super mum standard. <laughs> they're, my, they're my Monica cupboards. Monica from Friends, she had that sneaky little cupboard. Well, it was massive, yeah. massive cupboard. I've got those two. Um, so this book is our giveaway book. This literally actual copy is our giveaway book of the month over in the, the Facebook community group. Yeah. Tomorrow is the last day to enter to win it. Um, 
So go into the group. I've pinned it right at the top of the feed. So it's Super Mums Community Group. Um, and if you're not in that, go onto the website and you can get into that group. And you just have to write a little comment under it um, and you could win a copy. But can you tell us a little bit more about it? Um, I know we can get it on Amazon because that's where I got yeah. this one. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, a little bit more about it and where we can get okay. it and things like that. Okay. So it isn't just a gratitude journal. You've got your space in there to write something you feel grateful for every day, but it's actually a year long course. So every two weeks you get a different technique to play with so you don't get bored with your gratitude. And yes, there is one about being grateful for a pen. <laughs> um, there's even one about being grateful for people who annoy you, which is one of the later ones. I let you practice a bit first. But the idea is that in just moments today, you can play with these techniques that by the end of the year, not only do you actually, you've, it's like you've retuned it in a radio station to, to play you the soundtrack of feeling happier. You've also learned exactly step by step how to apply these techniques to turn your inner critic into your biggest cheerleader. It's just phenomenal. The book also comes with its own weekly podcast and there are videos in the Readers Club which guide you through this and there's a VIP version of the Readers Club that teaches you how to teach it to kids if that's what you want to do as well. So it's there as a year-long bite-sized course to take you from wherever you are now to making gratitude part of your daily life and taming your inner critic. And where can we stalk you on social media? <laughs> where to be followed? Where do, you, where do you like putting content out as opposed to feel like you have to? <laughs> okay, so the best place is to go to my website, which is claireyosa.com, and that's where you'll find things like my articles, my blog posts, um, my podcasts, and also on LinkedIn. So there's only one of me, Claire Yoster, on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, but it's best if you just go to my website, you'll find the latest links for all of that because you and I both know we're going to keep this video on YouTube for a while and the internet changes so quickly <laughs> that Facebook might be a thing of the past by the time somebody's watching this. <laughs> Um, if you are catching up on this on replay and wherever you found it, I'll make sure the links are in the description Thank down below the website and the, the current social media mm. as it exists. We're all going to be like walking around with the glasses and like this. <laughs> like, you think how far we've come with technology in the last few years, like where we're going to end up is insane, like mind blown. I know. <laughs> and has anyone got any questions i feel like we've covered so much this evening um in the little chat box um or if you're struggling to find the chat box you feel free to unmute yourself i presume it's not just me that can unmute people um <laughs> feel free to unmute yourself um, and ask a question uh no are we all okay do you want to maybe pop in the chat box? No question, I was about to say, yeah. Do you want to pop yeah. in the chat box if you have no <laughs> questions? That is also cool. good. Um, and then we know that everyone is happy and has found the chat box or not found the chat box. Um, the unmute, I think, is bottom left if you're on your desktop and that same sort of bar, mm. chat box and things is. Um, on your phone I feel like some of it's more obvious on your phone as someone watching mm. it's easier to watch on your phone like it's easier to find all the buttons and things mm. um but we do these are always done on zoom so if anyone's coming back next month for the next expert you'll be a zoom pro um yeah. <laughs> for the seeable that's a great cool. question me either perfect quite well I think question? yeah that's perfect so yeah. I would say thank you if you've been watching us live if they're giving up your time this evening and coming along. If you've been watching us on the replay, I hope you found this useful. I know that Jessica and I have talked about a lot of things today. If you take just two things away from this, I would invite you to take away the 60 second gratitude spiral and the ABC. Yeah, those two techniques can make such a potent difference. If you just played with those for the next week and then come and find me at my website and let me know how you got on, tell Jessica how you got on, it will create a shift for you. If you wanna dive in more deeply, I do have an online video course on all of this because sometimes it's nice to do that as well as a book or instead of a book. But those two techniques, that 60 second gratitude spiral and the ABC, accept, breathe, choose, 
they sound incredibly simple, but that's the beauty of them is they work deeply because you don't have to remember how to do them. So they're always there for you when you need them. Thank you everyone for coming and watching. Thank you so much for being our guest expert this evening. It's Thank you for having me. I'm like, I'm going to be too buzzing to go to sleep. So I'm going to have to go, <laughs> go and get in there and do some gratitude. Um, if you're, whether you're watching this live or you watch this on replay, do make sure that you're connecting with me as well. My links will be down below or if you've been watching this live, then you've had emails from me. So you've got all my links and everything in there. Um, but as I say at the end of everything, everything I do, um, remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.